In the previous videos, we have been discussing about deadlocks and how they are caused. So what are the ways of handling deadlocks? So the easiest way is to ignore the problem and pretend that deadlocks never occur in systems. Most modern operating systems use this strategy and this is also known as the ostrich strategy when you just simply ignore the problem. Another way of handling is to ensure that the system will never enter a deadlock state. Now for this, there are two ways of approaching this. One is the deadlock prevention and the other is deadlock avoidance. In prevention, we take care that the necessary conditions which lead to the deadlock, they are not satisfied. So at least one of the four necessary conditions, if that is not satisfied, then the deadlock can be prevented. Another way of ensuring that the system will never enter the deadlock state is deadlock avoidance. Here, before allocation of a resource to a requesting process, it is checked whether the system will be in a safe state or not. So, if the resource is allocated to the process, will the system lead to a deadlock or will it be in a safe state? So these two strategies, they can be used to ensure that the system never enters the deadlock state. And the last way of handling a deadlock is that we allow the system to enter a deadlock state and then recover from it. So either of these possible strategies of handling deadlocks can be used. In this video, we will discuss the deadlock prevention. So we know that the four necessary conditions of deadlock are mutual exclusion, hold and wait, no preemption and circular wait. So when all these four conditions, they are existing in the system, then the deadlock has occurred. So if we want to prevent a deadlock from happening, then if any of these four conditions is invalidated, then the deadlock can be prevented. So let's take how we can invalidate one of these necessary conditions one by one. So let's first talk about mutual exclusion. Mutual exclusion means that at any given point in time, only one process can use a particular resource. Now, if we want to invalidate this, what we can do is that we can allow multiple processes to use the shareable resources like read-only files, they can be used by multiple processes. So mutual exclusion is not required when, when we can use shareable resources. But however, this condition of mutual exclusion must hold for non-shareable resources, otherwise there would be problems of inconsistency and this we have already discussed. And some of the resources like mutexes and semaphores they are intrinsically non-shareable. So it is difficult to maintain the prevention of mutual exclusion. So this invalidating this condition is not very easy. The next condition is hold and wait. Hold and wait refers to that a process is holding some resources and it is waiting for some other resources which are held by other processes. Can we invalidate this condition? That means can we make sure that this condition does not exist? So for this, we must guarantee that whenever a process is requesting a resource, it is not holding any other resource. So for this, we can request the process that it announces how many resources it's, it needs before it begins execution and all those resources are allocated to that requesting process. So if there is a process P1 which is beginning to execute, then it should declare all the resources it requires and all those resources should be allocated to the process before it begins. So this is one way. Or the other way is that you allow a process to request resources only when it has none allocated to it. So it that means it is not holding any resources. So it should be allowed to request resources only when it is not holding any other resource. Now the problem with this is that if we uh, ask a process 
to announce all the resources. This is not possible because many a time the requirement for a resource is dynamic in nature. So it becomes difficult for processes to ask for resources before it begins execution. For this that it requests resources only when it has none allocated to it, this might lead to starvation because if it keeps on waiting for resources and gives, gives away the resources it is uh, holding, it may continuously keep on waiting for resources and starvation is possible. Now the third condition for deadlock is no preemption. What does this refer to? Preemption means that if a process is holding a particular resource, that means a resource has been assigned to a particular process and this process is waiting for another resource which, which is being currently held by another process. So let us say P2 is holding this resource R2. So P1 cannot preempt P2 to get hold of this particular resource. So can we take care of this condition so that this condition does not hold? So if a process holding the resources, it requests another resource that cannot be immediately allocated, then all resources currently being held are released. That means if P1 is requesting for a resource, let us say R2, which is being held by P2 and since P2 cannot be preempted, then P1 should release all the resources that means R1 or any other resource that P1 is holding, it should release that resource. So this is one way of handling this and then the process will restart only when it has required, gained all the required resources. This an alternate method to prevent this condition is to check whether the resources that have been allocated to some other thread if that thread is also waiting for additional resources. So let us say P1 wants R2 and R2 is being held by P2 and let us say P2 is also waiting for some additional resource. So if this is the case then this resource R2 which is required by P1, now this process can be preempted and R2 can be taken away and given to P1. So only if this process P2 is waiting for additional resources, then it can be requested to release the required resources. So the waiting thread is preempted and the allocated desired resources are given to the requesting thread. So here P1 is the requesting thread and P2 is the thread which was waiting for some other resources. So P2 has been preempted and R2 has been released and given to P1. Now this, this kind of thing cannot be generally applied to resources like mutex locks and semaphores. The last condition of deadlock prevention is circular weight. So if we can somehow invalidate this circular weight, then we can prevent a deadlock. What is circular weight? In a circular weight, there is a set of processes P0 to Pn where P0 is holding some resource and waiting for a resource which has been held by the next process. And this P1 is waiting for holding this resource R2 and waiting for a resource which is being held by the next process and Pn is waiting for a resource which is held by P0. So if we can impose an ordering of the resource type and we require that each process requests resources in an increasing order of enumeration, then this circular weight can be avoided. So let us say we name the resources R1, R2, we give some numbers to it. R3, R4 and whenever a process, suppose let us say P0, it wishes to acquire 1, 3 and 5, then it can first acquire resource R1, then resource R3, R3 and then resource R5 in this particular order only and at any given time if any resource is not available, then it will have to wait. Similarly, if P1, it requires R2 and R6 
So it will first have to get R2 and then only it can request for R6. If this kind of order is maintained and the resources are enumerated, then the circular weight condition will be invalidated. And this is the most common way of deadlock prevention. So here each resource is assigned a unique number and the resources are acquired in order. So in validating the four necessary conditions, even if one of them is invalidated, will lead to prevention of deadlock. In the next video, we will see how deadlock avoidance algorithms work.